It's a battle for third place in boys lacrosse. Neuqua Valley came up just short against New Trier in the semifinals as they look for revenge against Glenbard West, who ended their season a year ago. The Wildcats' offense has been borderline unstoppable since the postseason began. Early in the first, Ben Foy forces a turnover, then scoops up the ground ball and fires the shot on the run past Aiden Kelly, and the Wildcats strike first. Game tied at one with nine minutes to go in the first. Josh Crosby fights hard, then spins by a defender and scores to give the Hilltoppers a two to one lead. Wildcats with the ball in transition shortly after. Ben Foy to Dan Curtis to tie the game at two. And that's just the first of many goals in the game for Curtis. The game is all even at three midway through the first. Matt Cesario centers to an open Thomas Hoder and the Hilltoppers lead four to three heading to the second quarter. Ben Frick wins the opening faceoff of the second quarter. He heads in on the attack and passes to Hoder, but his shot is saved by Cam Nevins. He stops 14 shots in the game. A couple minutes into the second, Ben Foy works hard behind the net to fight off a defender and then finds a cutting Mark Trello. He takes a big hit but still puts the rock into the back of the net to tie the game at four. Wildcats with a man advantage midway through the second. They pass patiently and then Mark Trello bounces home his second of the game to give NV a 5-4 lead. Final minute of the second. Sam Schink with the feed inside to Dan Curtis. He undresses Aiden Kelly and the Wildcats lead 7-4 at halftime. Caden Perry opened up the third quarter with a goal and he once again has the ball, which always spells disaster for the opposition. He charges through the teeth of the defense and flings the backhand into the back of the net to cap off a 6-0 run for the Wildcats as they lead 9-4. A minute and a half to go in the third. Cade Champion bounces it to the outside and centers to Ben Foy for his team leading 65th goal of the season. Eddie McDonald wins the ensuing faceoff. Carter Sessa picks up the ground ball, then sprints downfield by a couple defenders and bounces the shot past Aiden Kelly as Nequa has a commanding 12-5 lead heading to the final stanza. A few minutes into the fourth quarter, Matt Quinn is unstoppable, knifing his way through the defense and then goes with a one-handed shot to finish it off. The Wildcats lead 13-6. Looking to avenge last year's super sectional loss, the Wildcats are just pouring it on now. Andrew Aramborgo bounces the shot through three defenders to find the back of the net to make it an eight goal Nequa lead. Dan Curtis had a monster game as he undresses a defender and fires home his sixth of the game and seventh of the state meet to put NV on top 15 to six. Midway through the fourth, Sam Schink bounces around some defenders and then passes inside to his brother Ben. He goes five hole to put an exclamation mark on this one as the Wildcats finish off an unbelievable season in third place. We were just trying to switch up the sets, so we were bumping in and out of different offenses, trying to switch it up on them, and really just getting the ball moving because we knew it was going to be a fast-paced game, and it was, and so we just had to come out swinging, move in transition, and just never look back. Well, we saw that we were getting, we had like a one or two goal lead, and our defense was getting tired, so we looked to slow it down, get our defense a break, and run off some of the clock. A lot of it was transition. I know a lot of my goals were in transition. We were able to move the ball quick and come out fast and started early. Well, the biggest thing was uh, staying you know, staying cold on the sideline. It was really hot out. So I was making sure I was getting water during the breaks and stuff to keep myself going. And uh, especially in the second half, I took more time on my shots. So I was able to play some better and I was hitting the goal. We went into a, we started, in, well, we, we started into a zone defense. We moved into that and uh, that really helped. With, like when they went in an open set and then when they put two men on crease, we just talked, communicated a lot and went into a zone. Well, I started off with uh, Eddie McDonald, that face off, winning that and popping it up and then uh, just in transition, just no one slid and then just went all the way to the goal. In the first quarter, we were a little sloppy with our defense, but then we kind of slowed it down on offense, kept our possessions going, and which gave our defense more time to kind of control it and our defense really picked it up in the second half. It's an awesome feeling. I mean, we came out this game knowing that it'd be all of our seniors' last game, and it's just a great feeling knowing that we're leaving with a win. Defensively, we noticed that they were like open, so we decided to go into a zone to kind of lock down the crease at the same time as we're 
uh, kind of locking down everything else. We're pressuring them. We're making them make uh, mistakes, pushing the ball over. Playing Glenbard West again is exactly what we wanted. And even though we got third, it was a good ending to a lot of our seniors' careers because it was a team that we've been a rival with for four years. And it was just a really good feeling to beat them in our last game. It's a good feeling. You know, Nikwa hasn't technically been a powerhouse in the lacrosse scene for a while. And now we're starting to make our name for ourselves. So I'm glad I could be a part of it. I'm glad that I could put, you know, help my team put Nikwa on the map as one of those top teams in the yeah, It's nice to show everyone that might have doubted us at the beginning of season. I know preseason rankings we weren't ranked too high, so it's nice to show everyone what Nico Bell Cross is about. You know, we came off a super tough loss against Nutrier, but we played one of our best games that game, and so we kept the momentum rolling, and our offense was just going today. I went back and forth a lot during the first half, so uh, an adjustment we made in the second half was we spin the ball a couple times before we actually go to the goal, so to keep our defense, you know, not as tired, and uh, to keep the offense going. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Ryan Risky.